Welcome to another episode of Barrel Trauma Wiring Explanations, and I am your host, Parfait. Today we're going to be looking at the Bilge to Extra Ballast Converter. So first, uh, let's have a look at the mod. So this is a pretty simple mod. Just downloaded it, this is what you'll see. So it basically consists of a small amount of wiring components to change any bilge pump and water detector setup into a ballast pump. So this is uh, deceptively powerful, in particular for some of the stock subs. So for example, the Typhon and the R29 in particular have been built such that they're pretty you know, heavy on the water. They go uh, up quite quickly, but they don't go down. So extra ballast is pretty good. So uh, as an example, use the Typhon. No, give an example of how you would install this into a sub. And then after it's installed, we'll talk a little bit about what you would use it for and the actual, actual quite high value. The place that I like to install this is in the airlocks, because you're already expecting that that area could be flooded, so it's relatively safe for you to turn that into a ballast pump, sort of, on the fly, and not really worry about crew ending up in there accidentally. So I've already saved this as an item assembly, so let's just search for it here. So I'm going to just install one in the bottom here. And then we can look at uh, the difference in performance when you use it versus not using it. Uh, so the easiest way to do this is to just delete uh, whatever pump is actually currently there. So what we're going to do is go, we're just going to go ahead and do that. So uh, the stock subs have a simple setup that's usually just a water detector with the pump. So. What I'm going to do is just disconnect these things, because there's no reason to delete the water detector, we're just going to put it back in anyway, so... I'll just delete the pump. So here we'll delete our navigation terminal, because obviously we don't need those. And if you have a look at the wiring, uh, here we're just going to connect these two blues back up to the water detector state there, so... It's no problem. And we want to leave the wire that's currently there so that when you're not turning on the ballast, it just behaves as, you know, the developers intended or you as the submarine designer intended. Whatever this room normally is for, it'll do that. And it's only a ballast pump when you want it to be. So, let's just connect these wires here quickly. So when they're dangling like that, you can just double click to pick up the end. So this was connecting to the set state. The rest of the wires we'll just leave. Uh, this is the easiest way to install it so we don't have to care about where the rest of the wires are going. So for this we have the green is going to the velocity. <coughs> that in there. And in the case of the Typhon, we actually don't have a separate signal button. To make the full use of this mod, you really want to have a button on the navigation terminal controlling the ballast on and off, because it really improves the maneuverability of the sub, and you can't, you know, really make full use of that unless you're the captain driving the sub and having control of turning that on and off. So I'm also going to just quickly rewire the nuclear reactor shutdown to a button, because I mean, it's totally fine. How often are we really, you know, shutting down the nuclear reactor sort of randomly gameplay? I don't think so, not very often, I don't think. That's the one we'll grab. So I'm just gonna, you know... There! So now we'll go pick up the yellow wire, and this one is now gonna go to our available signal out three. Okay, so now I'm just going to have to move the pump into position. Alright, so now we'll just stow the rest of these components here. And for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to bother with those two wires. So now, 
on the navigation terminal, we will be able to use signal 3 to toggle the ballast on and off. So now you can see the ballast tanks are almost completely filled. So this is what I'm talking about with the sub goes up quickly and then it goes down. So if we just go straight down, we can see what the sort of maximum attainable speed is for sub. I believe it is 8 or maybe 8 kilometers per hour. So now if we hit the signal 3, see that this uh, our new ballast tank will start filling. So there you go, and it'll fill up all the way to the top, because that's what the other ballast tanks are doing, and get a new descent velocity. So just by filling up that sort of small hull volume, up to 10. So as I mentioned, this build is powerful for improving the Typhon. Uh, we can also improve the R29 by a similar fashion. So I've shown you the installation, so now I'll just do a quick demonstration as well of the R29. So I created another version of the R29, the R29B, which has the extra ballast tank already installed in both ballast, or I should say airlock areas. Right, so just as I discussed, it's the wrong thing. Right, we have all these connections, right? Same connections as, as before. Water detector plus the two relay components. I used a different color of wire this time, just for just for fun. Right, and this one is see wired the same. So now we'll just do a quick test. Yeah, well, I forgot the R29 takes uh, <clears throat> a second here to boot up. So the R29 already has an available third signal, so we don't have to worry about firing any external buttons. So again, just to demonstrate, with no extra ballast, The R29 is not as bad as the Typhon. I think we're getting uh, a little bit better at 9. But now if we pop on the extra ballast, this will give us uh, an additional uh, 3 or 4 kilometers per hour. And, you know, for these big beefy, beefy subs, right, like this is... can make a pretty big difference for maneuverability, especially when you're trying to go down. So the one thing that I haven't mentioned yet, which is another really big strength of these, uh, especially if you're playing single player, is for defense from a Thalamus. So if you never played uh, the game much, this will be a spoiler, but uh, if you get a Thalamus infection on the sub, uh, while you are repairing it, your ballast tanks will be offline. So you'll have to drain them of water completely. So the extra ballast tank mod allows you a, I would say, almost required way of dealing with the thalamus. So while your normal ballast tanks are drained, you can still maneuver the sub around using the extra ballast tanks. Uh, so otherwise, under normal circumstances, you completely drain your ballast tanks and now the sub just floats straight up to the roof and you're pinned there until you're finished dealing with your thalamus. So the extra ballast tank has two great strengths, which make this, I would say, a required mod on all of my subs anyway. It greatly increase maneuverability and a way to deal with a balance when you get an infection on your sub. So I hope you enjoyed this explanation uh, of the extra ballast tank. Check out the rest of my videos for vanilla builds. Don't forget to like and subscribe.